Spring is in the air at Global Voice Broadcasting. Fresh new shows are hitting the airwaves every day. Shows about all the things that matter to you in your life. Music, fashion, celebs, and more. It's all here, and it's getting better every day. Only at Global Voice Broadcasting. I highly recommend Miss Hicks. Her books, her CDs are encouraging. I bought her book, The Hill to Climb. Uh, she's a very inspirational speaker. And I look forward to one day being able to work with her. Your power lies within you. Let it loose. Aspiration, inspiration, motivation, edification, determination. These are the keys of life success brought to you by none other than award-winning author, motivational lecturer, business consultant, and much more as she gets you aimed to your purpose. And now, ladies and gentlemen, young and elder, from Hollywood to the entire world, here is your host of Aim to Purpose, the radio show, Louise Hicks, along with her co-host, yours truly, Kenan Wesley Mason. Hello, world. How is everybody? We hope you all had a great weekend. I'm Louise Hicks, your host of Aim to Purpose, the radio show. And I am Kenan Mason, your co-host of Aim to Purpose, the radio show. And we want to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone listening and watching from all over the world. And we have a great show in store for all of you on this edition. Yes, and our guest is in the studio with us today. And our show, I tell you, you won't want to miss this one. It's about three quick and easy ways to lose weight without dieting. And what we intend to do today is take the die out of the uh, word <laughs> dieting and put a little ting in it and a little fun in it. Right. And we know there are a lot of people out here that want to diet and they're, they've done this diet, that diet, and what diet haven't you done, actually. So we're going to talk today with Dr. Rupa Chari and Deepak Shari, and they're going to share with us. So before we get into that and they come into the studio, uh, I'd like to share with you that Shamika Brown uh, is not here again with us today. However, I'd like to share with you a little local community news about my weekend. I went, had the well, pleasure. Let, let, let's, let's, let's make it official. <laughs> okay. we got to make it official here. There we go. There we Louise go. Louise Hicks, take it away. <laughs> As I said, I am not Shamika Brown, Mika the Diva, but Louise Hicks, I want to give you a little bit of local community news here because this weekend I had the pleasure of attending an event in Los Angeles at the Convention Center, Los Angeles, California, that is, since we are worldwide, uh, the KJLH Women's Health Forum in Los Angeles and I must say that was my first time attending this event I think it was the 15th annual and I uh, found a lot of enjoyment and enlightenment in visiting the hair shows because I got information about taking care of my hair and how to better improve my hair when I went to some of the medical um, seminars and workshops that they had and I, I wasn't too enthusiastic about those as much because I found that they focused more on surgeries and um, uh, other issues as opposed to sharing with us how to prevent many diseases. But the more the focus in the seminars that I went to was more on um, uh, surgeries, drugs, and trials, getting people to come and experiment, uh, getting involved in the experiments, as I call being a guinea pig, so to speak. <laughs> right. Ultimately, they want to create new patients. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's what the deal is. They want to create new patients, and they, uh, it's about um, convincing you that their technology, uh, mammograms, for instance, or uh, uh, any other uh, radiation and, and things of this nature are, uh, these are the standard status quo operations of uh, these type of medical procedures that we witnessed here at this health forum that was primarily for, 
for uh, for women. Yes, but as a woman, I wasn't really that enthused about it. And I went to only one of the seminars because, unfortunately, they had them all at the same time. I wanted to go to the one about fibroids, and I, wanted, I went to the one about cervical cancer. And some of the responses to some of the answers I got, I didn't find that favorable because they really weren't focused on what we're going to talk about here today, which this was not planned because I had no idea, I guess, would be coming <laughs> on today at the same time right. as the day, uh, a couple of days after we had gone to these, uh, this women's health forum that uh, was more focused, it appeared to me, on having getting people to have surgeries for different ailments and taking drugs and, as uh, Kenan said, technology. And, uh, but the hair shows uh, I did enjoy because they were more enlightening to me than the health care for the <laughs> women. <laughs> and the other one I wanted to uh, share with you that I went to briefly was... Uh, the plus side of life, women, um, the plus side of life, where life flourishes. And this was a cancer benefit, a comedy and fashion show, in which I really enjoyed because it was put on, hosted by Kashana Perfected. And I really enjoyed it, the comedy show as well as the fashion show. And they honored women who were either going through cancer or had or were survivors of cancer. And it was an excellent event. It was their first annual. And I look forward to going to more events like this because they really were advocating. They had a health uh, specialist there. Health, I should say, uh, not specialist, but a fitness specialist, Kelly Palmer, who I really was excited about because she shared uh, how to drink water and all the healthy side of things. So at this event, I enjoyed it more than I did the Women's Forum because, like, as I said, they were not talking to us about how to become healthier. And the other, I'd, I'd like to mention the... Um, Stevie Mack was the host, and he was excellent. And some of the other people on the show was Jackie Fabulous. Yvette, the funny lady, oh, she was awesome. Uh, Timothy Butler was great singer. Al Gonzalez, great, great funny man, too. Elena Love, she was great, and she was a, su a cancer survivor. So I just wanted to share that with you. I really thoroughly enjoyed the show, and I look forward to their second annual. And this was hosted again by Kishana Perfected. So with that being Great. said, we're going to move forward because we do have to uh, get to our sports therapy. Yes. <laughs> and so, once again, it is sports therapy with Robert Snell. What you got for us this week, Robert? Thanks, Kenan. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Arsenal Radio and the show at Aim to Purpose. Uh, starting off, though, in Major League Baseball, Josh Hamilton was just traded over the weekend from the Angels to the Texas Rangers. And this has kind of been a big story lately because there's a lot of controversy surrounding how the Angels handled this. Because if you guys remember, I mentioned in, uh, over the winter meetings, Josh Hamilton came out to Major League Baseball and admitted that he had had a relapse with his cocaine addiction and had used coke over the previous offseason. And uh, Major League Baseball chose not to take action. Uh, Josh Hamilton didn't make it public, no one made it public, but somehow the story got leaked. So there was a lot of you know question over how this did. And many people thought the Angels were the ones who actually leaked the story, which would be illegal under the MLB Players Agre Association agreement. Right. And uh, their motivation to leak it would obviously be to not have to pay him the remaining $118 million. Well, unfortunately, uh, for the Angels at least, Josh Hamilton wasn't suspended, so they were on the hook to pay him, and as a result, they found the only way to get rid of him was to send him to the Rangers for next to nothing. Wow. Uh, the Rangers will be paying only $2 million over the next, uh, each over the next two years, and that'll still leave the Angels on the hook for about 110 to uh, like 115 million of right. the contract. So they're paying him to play for someone else at this point. Mm. Wow. Interesting. The politics <laughs> of baseball. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that was just one thing, though. The main story right now, I think, has to be the NBA playoffs. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> most of the series' first rounds wrapped up over the weekend. Uh, the <clears throat> Grizzlies and Thunder both advanced to play each other next round. 
the Spurs and Clippers are tied up at 2-2 after the Clippers had a surprising <laughs> Game 4 victory. Yes, they did. Yeah, uh, the coach's son, Austin Rivers, came off the bench to provide a 16-point spark. And honestly, I don't think <laughs> anyone, even I don't even think Austin Rivers or Doc would have predicted that. No, because, of course not. Yeah, that was a signing that I honestly thought he only got because he was his son. Yeah, and He yeah. probably did. And uh, he came out of nowhere to... <laughs> he made an impact. Yeah. I mean, he, he showed that he can, you know, make an impact on... Uh, on the team and uh, and it showed uh, the f- the little time that he was on the court he wasn't on uh, for too many minutes but the time that he was on the court it was solid right but the significance is, is the first three games it was not solid when he was on the court right and, it, and right. it was that way in the regular season too so it was just like he caught lightning in a bottle for one night but in the playoffs all you need is one you right know cause yeah. just survive in advance that's right so we'll see i mean now game five on tuesday moves to los angeles and you know the spurs the defending champs are they going to be able to take it from him or will the clips yeah. actually take that next step finally yeah, well, this is a make it or break it time. Yeah, not only a game five, but it's a make it or break it time for the Clippers because uh, should they get past San Antonio, mm-hmm. it will give them all the confidence in the world exactly. to move forward in the semifinal and then the finals and then on to the championship. So uh, it's they're not in the clear yet. No, the 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 Spurs are a well oiled machine. Uh, they are defending their titles, and uh, they're not going down without a good quality fight. Yeah, they'll bring it every each and every night. Every you game. Don't have to worry about that. Every game. Um, real quick, what is your take on Scotty Brooks uh, uh, being let go from the Oklahoma City Thunder? So that kind of, <laughs> to briefly, uh, the Thunder this year were projected to win the West and potentially even win it all, uh, win the finals. And they, of course, had a season injuring suffered to both uh, franchise player Kevin Durant and co-star Serge Ibaka. Yep. So they didn't have them for the last third of the year. Mm-hmm. And that really affected their chances to make the playoffs, and they didn't make the postseason. Yeah. So as a result, they let uh, head coach Scott Brooks go. And... <sighs> That's kind of a touchy subject because it's like, well, to be a good coach, you know, is it like was Phil Jackson, did he win 12 titles because he's a great coach or because he had, um, you know, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant and right. Shaquille O'Neal? That's you know, right. Like, like, so it, is it fair to judge uh, Scott Brooks for having a, you know, quote unquote, disappointing season because Kevin Durant and, you know, half his roster right. wasn't there to make it happen, or, you know, is that his fault? So Seems to be a trend in the NBA that you sacrifice the coach uh, first and right. foremost versus, I mean, Scott Brooks took this team from Nowhereville, pretty mm-hmm. much. He sure did. For seven <laughs> years, yes. uh, took them from being a um, maybe almost D-League type team and brought them to championship status, or just a hair from championship status. Right. right. And the other thing is, is you have to look at it. He didn't do anything wrong ever. That's, That's the right. Big thing too. That's right. I mean, you look at coaches who, you know, we yell at them for messing things up. Like, you know, you had lightning and you had, you know, everything you could ask for. Like uh, when the Lakers recently had Dwight Howard, Steve Nash, Powell, right. Saul, Kobe Bryant, right, and Mike D'Antoni uh, and Mike Brown both couldn't stay out of their own way. You know, That's they right. kept tripping over their own feet. That's right. Whereas you look at the other end, like a Scott Brooks who was able to, um, you know, nurture Serge Ibaka, Kevin Durant, and That's Russell right. Westbrook, and he was a great. Uh, you know, increment in helping them grow. He didn't hurt their development, that's, that's for sure. That's right, that's right. And you look at other coaches like Rick Carlisle, for example, who recognized that talent isn't always, you know, the winning factor. And he actually took away talent from his team by getting rid of Rondo for the rest of the postseason. Mm-hmm. And they finally win a game, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So, Amazing. The politics yeah. of sports, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is. That's so, basically what it is. It is, right. it is. Anything else, Robert? Uh, last thing, did you notice anything from the Paul Pierce saga? No, no. So going into the series against the Raptors, uh, the Wizards were projected to be underdogs, weren't projected to win, and Paul Pierce said that the Raptors aren't ready yet, that they don't have it, whatever that it factor is, they don't have it. <laughs> and sure enough, the Wizards swept the Raptors in oh, four yeah. games, and oh, yeah. Paul Pierce had a lot to do with it. And then afterwards, he took to social media and called out a uh, noted Raptors fan, the rapper Drake. Oh, he, of course. <laughs> he called out uh, the whole 
We Are the North campaign saga and actually tweet out a picture of him using a Game of Thrones reference uh, where he's sitting in a, you know, like, chair representing the North. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, he had a good time with that. But definitely looking forward next round to uh, Wizards. Well, not Wizards Hawks, but assuming the Wizards beat the Hawks, Wizards Cavs or Wizards Bulls. I think that'll be a good time. It will. It will. Yeah. All right. Well, that is Sports Therapy. With Robert Snell. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kenny. Thank Lewis. you. All right. Thank you, Robert. Great. You always enlighten me because I don't watch it as much as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I still have time. <laughs> uh, yep. So, anyhow, thanks, Robert. And now we're going to get ready to take a quick break here, and then we're going to come back with our featured in studio guest today. And we're going to yes. talk about the three quick and easy ways to lose weight without dieting. And we're going to be talking to Dr. Cherry. Uh, the doctor uh, and Deepak Cherry and uh, we will be back in just a short while so stay with us this edition of Aim to Purpose the radio show is brought to you by L. Hicks Consulting Services when you want the best in business coaching life coaching or perhaps your organization business or company is in need of a dynamic speaker for an upcoming workshop or seminar contact Louise Hicks for L. Hicks Consulting Services at 1-562-310-1495 from anywhere around the world that's 1-562-310-1495 for more information about Louise Hicks and her consulting services visit her website at www.louise louisehicks.biz. Again, that's www.louisehicks.biz or call 1-562-310-1495. L. Hicks Consulting Services, where professionalism is top priority. Hello, world. We are back. Once again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of Aim to Purpose, the radio show, along with my co-host, Ken and Wesley Mason, and we are here now with our special in-house guest today, where our topic is, and I'm loving this topic, al- this topic already, quick and, three quick and easy ways to lose weight without dieting. And first, we're going to tell you a little bit about our featured guest, and Kenan is going to do that. Yes, Dr. Chari uh, successfully combines her unique training and experience in integrative medicine, along with her traditional medical background to provide the best quality health care possible for her patients for the last 15 years. Dr. Chari is certified in hypnosis, thought field therapy, neuro-linguistic programming, and interactive guided imagery. Dr. Chari's vision has always been to help people to heal themselves by treating the underlying cause of medical and psychological conditions, including nutritional deficiencies, stress, and suppressed emotions. Dr. Chari specializes in customized DNA weight loss programs, natural hormone balance for women, and fast relief of fatigue and anxiety. Deepak Chari helps his clients release their limiting unconscious beliefs using an advanced biocommunication technology and program. Deepak's vision and passion has always been to incorporate leading edge non-invasive technologies that can quickly and easily transform the quality of your life. Uh, The Chari family was featured on the Learning Channel due to their innovative healing techniques and technologies in mind-body medicine and they are co-authors of the number one international bestseller Ready, Aim, Inspire. So let's give a warm Aim to Purpose, the radio show. Welcome to Drs. Rupa and Deepak Chari. Welcome, 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 Dr. Chari and Deepak. We are so happy to have you here today with us. And I, I love this topic, and I love when Kenan was introducing you both, where um, it's you're, you've written, you're part of this book, Ready, Aim, Inspire. And I like that word, aim, because that's what our show is all about. Aim, except we put the ED, and our aim is for aspiration, inspiration, motivation, edification, and determination. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I I love it when you said non-invasive. Because often, as I was mentioning earlier, we had gone to this um, event over the weekend, the um, 
Women's Health Forum at the convention center. And a lot of the focus was on surgeries, drugs, and becoming um, uh, a patient for trials using, utilizing drugs as experimental because they haven't been used before to decide whether they work. And with all the different genetic makeups, I guess that's why they do the trials. But I'm not one that's for all of these um, invasive surgeries when you can have an alternative. And I love the fact that you all are focusing on that in the root of what causes these problems. That's great. So uh, let's um, get into some of the questions that I know our listening audience that's across the globe because we're all humans, we're all connected no matter where you live on the globe. So let's talk about the cause of weight gain because that's what we, we want to know because we know as a young person we didn't have a lot of obesity and high blood pressure and all the things that's going on and I'm 64 and I grew up eating right out of the field here. We'd go out and dig it out of the dirt. <laughs> and that was in Shreveport, Louisiana. So share with us um, insight on that. What is the cause of people gaining all of this weight now? Well, thank you for having us on your show. First of all, we're so happy to be here. And that's a great question. One of the leading causes of weight gain, actually, is chronic underlying inflammation. Now, inflammation in and of itself is not bad. In fact, it's vital for our health and well-being and survival. Mm -hmm. But when it's at a chronic, which means a long-term inflammation that's been taking place that hasn't been addressed, and there's many reasons for that, which I'll share with you, that's when we can see weight gain, and we see the myriad of diseases that are literally at epidemic proportions nowadays. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It's and out of control, actually. It is, absolutely. <laughs> it's out of control. And what we found is some of the leading causes of this chronic inflammation are food sensitivities, mm -hmm. dehydration, digestive disturbances, stress, which Deepak addresses, which is a real key component. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And hormone imbalances, whether it's the thyroid, adrenals, blood sugar balance. And then toxins we're exposed to in the air, water, and food, which is hard to avoid nowadays. Right. So all of these factors put together um, really contribute to this underlying inflammation. And if we can address the food sensitivities, which actually are really tied into gluten and GMOs, genetically engineered foods, and our water intake, and all of these other factors, then that can make a significant difference difference in actually decreasing the amount of inflammation and then enhancing the quality of health. There you go. What, what, um, oh, you have a question, no, go ahead, Kate. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. You, you talk about gluten and the GMOs. Uh, some people don't even know what yes. that is because I know I'm not that much educated. My son is more educated on the holistic side and alternative medicine, and I, I know a lot of times we, we talk about integrative medicine. And can you elaborate on integrative medicine and what is gluten and GMO? What are they? Definitely. Well, in integrative medicine, we're trying to look at the foundational root cause of why a person is experiencing the symptoms and the disease that they have. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding now more and more is everyone is talking about gluten, but what exactly is gluten? Gluten is a protein, and it comes from... It's a Latin-derived word, which literally is glue. It's what binds and holds these grains together. That's right. And gluten is actually found in the seed or the kernel of the grains, most specifically wheat, barley, and rye. Right. And what's happened since the mid-1950s is the process of agriculture where they've been hybridizing. And, you know, one is they're taking different strains from other grains and mixing with it mm -hmm. or trying to change the strain within the wheat. And there's al it's also called back crossing, where they're trying to take a specific trait, let's say trying to make it shorter and stockier. Right. They're calling it dwarf wheat. Mm -hmm. hmm. And also using mutagens, which is basically using chemicals, x-rays, and gamma rays to literally change the DNA within these plants. So all of these combined wow. is affecting our grains. That's right. And they're saying it, there may be even up to 80 to 90 percent more gluten in the grains nowadays than they were in the past. And glu that gluten actually binds 
the grain together. So it what helps the bread to rise or mm -hmm. makes it kind of doughy. So it's found in everything, yeah. all of the processed foods, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, it, it it's almost like the uh, the cousin of high fructose corn syrup, because that's in almost everything now that you see on the market in your uh, your standard grocery store. Yes, and it has had an effect. Um, it's had an effect on the masses. I mean, it's really no secret what's what's been happening uh, with. Um, I guess the, the, the way we look at health today is that the food is not the answer because the food has been tampered with so much. Right. You know, we, we're, we're uh, now the food, you know, your produce now, you can't wash off your food now because Monsanto has gone in and now they've sprayed your soil with the pesticides that grow into the produce now. So you can't wash it off. You're eating this stuff now. And so this is what accumulates. It's an accumulation of these uh, different chemicals and it will cause your inflammation, uh, which in turn will create illness over time. Uh, I'm, am I explaining Absolutely. that? Absolutely, because even Hippocrates said yes. that all disease begins in the gut. Yes. And this is what the gluten processed foods mm -hmm. as well as genetically modified foods are affecting right they're causing inflammation in the gut and within our small intestine is where we're absorbing most of the nutrients right and the small intestine the junction should be very tight and because it's our first line of defense when we eat our body's protective mechanism that's right so if there's inflammation in our gut we're not going to absorb the nutrients properly and incompletely digested food ends up getting absorbed back into our bloodstream mm -hmm. and our immune system attacks it thinking it's the enemy yeah basically takes a picture of it and tries to tell the other parts of the immune system if you see something like this attack it but the problem is it's called molecular mimicry where it's a similar type of proteins that are found in these gluten and other proteins in the food mm -hmm. that are similar to the proteins found in our thyroid our pancreas right and even these projections, they're like finger-like projections in our small intestine that absorb the nutrients called villi. Mm -hmm. So then our immune system attacks itself, our intestines, our thyroid, our pancreas. And then we see a whole host of other diseases as well. And then they will call it autoimmune. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Amazing. Yeah. And, and what you do then, you're saying you get to the root cause because you're more into the integrative side of medicine right yes. as opposed to just when I know like some doctors particularly psychiatrists you walk into the office and they're ready to give you a drug <laughs> because a drug is a heal all for them many of them not all of them but um, and even some doctors because I know from speaking from my own personal experience I had an illness and at one time I was on seven different medications and fortunately, I had a doctor who was integrative medicine and sent me to an acupuncturist as well as a, um, chiropractic. chiropractic treatment and physical therapy. And uh, this all happened to me at work because of mold. And I was allergic to the room that I was in that had the mold infiltrated into my system, not knowing what was going on with me. I ended up having flu-like symptoms, and I'm thinking I had the flu. But what triggered me to realize maybe it was something more because it lingered and I had blood uh, nosebleeds that I'd never in my life had, never been sick and lost 20 pounds in two weeks, couldn't stand food. And I finally got to the root of it. Like you said, you get to the root of something. And the only reason I got to the root of it is because I had a meeting. And in going to the meeting, I had forgotten and left a little notebook on top of my file cabinet. When I came back, that notebook was filled with nothing but black stuff. And with me sitting in this office, I had inhaled all this stuff daily. And I did notice sometimes when I'd go home on the weekend, I was feeling better. But sometimes I still would have to go to emergency because I couldn't breathe and my whole body just ached and it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I would not have known to get how to get to the root had I not left that notebook there. So I like it when you say get to the root. So um, on this three ways to um, find out the why popular foods uh, don't work because sometimes people, I mean fads rather, sometimes people go into these diet fads and they don't realize that 
they are just fast because I knew somebody that went on a water well not a water it was a liquid you know back in certain time in the I think it was the 80s or 90s these liquids were very popular and people were just drinking them and they were losing weight and after they get back they start eating the food is so good they get twice as big as they were <laughs> so is that the kind of fat diets that really we should be getting away from or how does that work Definitely, because it seems like there's a new fat diet every day. <laughs> every year, yes. that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so what we do at our office is look at genetic testing. Because even within myself, my brother Deepak, and our mother, we actually, each of us had a different diet type that would be optimal for us. You know, yes. and so like for me, it was more low carb, high protein. For my brother, more balanced diet. For my mother, another type of diet. Right. So each of us is so unique that... It's that's why tradition, you know, fad diets don't work because mm -hmm. it may work for some people, won't work for other people. Right, and that's 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 a key, and that's it's important to know that those distinctions. Yeah, and and that's interesting because you said your brother, and it's it's interesting you uh, work as a brother sister team, and we work as a mother son team. <laughs> <laughs> so that and that's good because you can balance out each other. Because I know my mm -hmm. son is more knowledgeable about these kind of things, and. You have the medical background that's more uh, you more knowledgeable on, and Deepak has uh, the background on more being more consciously aware of how our awareness about our mind, body, and spirit. Like you said, that you have different uh, body chemical makeups, and you use a different diet. So, how does that work, uh, Deepak? How do you bring people into helping them to better? understand how their conscious mind or subconscious mind play a role in what they're eating and how they can lose weight. Wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I, what, I, what I do is uh, I look at the subconscious part. Because I have an engineering background and a biofeedback, I'm a certified biofeedback specialist, I was trained in kind of a left brain science, but I was always interested in the healing arts and thus it, you know, it started me on the journey to find out ways for my own confidence when I was, you know, growing up of how to boost my own confidence. And then I, you know, learned all these technologies and techniques for helping other people and hundreds of people through the years. Uh, and I basically help people release their limiting beliefs. And a limiting belief is a false notion that you have about yourself or about a situation you're in. And we're talking about weight loss in this case. Uh, if a person feels like, oh, I'll, you know, I'm always fat or or my parents were and grandparents were always fat, so how am I going to lose weight? Or, or I look ugly, or I, you know, or they have all these beliefs. They're all false notions, mm -hmm. and there's no structure behind them. But if they believe it in their subconscious, as you were mentioning, um, that's going to forward into their reality. And um, and a lot of times it's our past programming that we're not even consciously aware of, and thus the unconscious part that that I work with. Um, for example, in regarding the losing weight part. Um, many people are often f afraid to look attractive mm. okay now this seems like a contradiction why would that be but if let's say you know in their childhood or as they're growing up there was a lot of let's say physical or emotional or verbal abuse as a child basically i found from the time you're born till the time you're around 10 you basically download everything into your hard drive into your subconscious hard drive without any analysis you're just that's like a sponge you're not analyzing right. it that's right it's only after 12 or 13 that you analyze the data that's downloaded so you're given these kind of glasses of how you look at the world thus your mm. perception your perception is how you feel about uh, such a certain situation how you feel about yourself um, and so therefore if you if you feel that I'm, you know, I'm not attractive, um, or I don't want to look attractive because of, you know, that's, it's a protective mechanism to protect you supposedly against, you know, the abuse that might have happened before, that won't necessarily happen again. But it, so you do that. So then that's mm -hmm. one reason people keep eating. Another reason I found so at the subconscious level is that they may have a, a partner or or a, or a friend or a or a, in a significant other who's not really supporting them on the same path. You know, right. they're, here they are trying to oh, say, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, right. hey, I'm going to do this great diet. And the other person says, okay, yeah, good luck on that. But they're not really, you know, they're not <laughs> like right. participating in the and process. And that means a lot. <laughs> it means a lot. So if you're on this journey yourself, well, well, this person's not on the journey with me, so I guess uh, I can slip through here and there. You know, I'm not, I don't have someone supporting me. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, and then the other part is, you know, the family patterns. You know, like, for example, what I mean by that is, let's say you're raised and, and, you know your 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 parents and grandparents are say you know go ahead and just eat the eat this food it's good for you 
But let's say, based on nutrition and all, it's you find out later on that that wasn't so healthy, but you had your childhood and you know eating whatever food that was, and you thought that's that's the best you had at the time. Well, later on, your body adapts to that, and it's a family pattern. And sometimes with your family, you think, well, that was the, my comfort food when I was with my family, that's right. eating whatever that food was. So. Um, you know, but then it's not a healthy food, so then it, you know, then that leads to weight too, and then, so that's that's another. It's a family pattern, and then if you go to a reunion, <laughs> and everyone says, "Hey, go ahead and eat this stuff," oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that, <laughs> right. that you know how that works, mm -hmm. and then and then lastly, um, the other part is that you're 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 trying to find support. Let me see here, you're trying to find a support group of other people doing the same thing as well. Yeah, and you know sometimes you feel like if you don't find the support group. And you're kind of on your own, so all of these things combined can can lead to you know um, issues People in gaining, gaining weight. weight yeah. Exactly. Subconsciously, just by those. Uh, elements that you just described, and that's that's easy for people to fall into that trap. Exactly. And and on the on the flip side, it can cause people to actually lose, lose weight, weight because that you get anorexics and people oh, like yeah, that that true. because of things that they've been told in their childhood. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. That's going to make you fat. This is going to make you fat. And you won't be attractive. Oh, yeah. Right. And, You're going to be ugly. <laughs> and it becomes oh, that it becomes that subconscious message that it, it, and things start to trigger that and yeah. uh and, and so then people become afraid of the very thing that sustains them f for living yeah you know? that's yeah. true the reverse can also happen mm -hmm. and then also you know another thing is that sometimes you're just kind of in a rut so sometimes people are bored you know like for example um you know, in the office, you know, you have all these donuts and, oh, and yeah. all these Twinkies and all this, I mean, or whatever food may be there. And, you know, it's like everyone else is eating it and saying, well, I'm not going to eat that because right. I'm on this diet. But right. but everybody else is, oh, you're not going to join in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a part of it. Or maybe you're unhappy with your life where you are financially or in a relationship wise or, or, or even in your career wise. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so then that's a way of getting some comfort as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. And people yeah. go through depression and they go through a lot of despair sometimes and they feel like, Eating or not eating, like you say, it can have the opposite effect because you, you may eat. Some people, when they are depressed, they eat, overeat. And some people, when they're depressed, they don't eat at all. They, yeah. We go through different or they phases. Will, or they will purge after they eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's those true. There's, are many, really different, there's, uh, many, different there's many different ways. Your perception is your reality, as you described. And mm -hmm. nothing has to run in the family. I've always said this, that... You, you don't have to follow those patterns if you see that there is a destructive pattern exactly. uh, going on within uh, that family structure as it pertain pertains to health exactly. or being overweight. Uh, you, you see grandma, she cooked the food a certain way. We all ate at the family dinners the same food that gave her diabetes. And then when she passes on, we're still eating that same food because it was good for all of us all these generations. And, and then, and then the, and then the, the, the next person gets diabetes or yeah. stroke or heart condition. And they believe they're supposed to get it, like you said, Deepak. It's something within their subconscious Correct. because I, I know in my family, and not just my family, in black families, and particularly, they'll tell you, well, you know, diabetes. Doctors will tell you this: diabetes run in your family, and you, you're probably going to end up with it, and blah blah blah. But they don't give you preventative. Uh, measures in order to mm. not have it because I know my mother has it I have uh, brothers and sisters uh, well a sister and brothers that have uh, diabetes and diabetes is serious I mean it's a serious illness I don't have it but uh, if I'd listen to what is being said and take all that in being a product of my environment I'm supposed to have it because it runs in my family, remember? <laughs> mm, right, <laughs> so. right. That's right. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons what I do with my with my biocommunication uh, work that I do, I help to release these limiting beliefs that that we were told or, you know, unconsciously that we yeah. were brought up with, yeah. you know, from your parents and grandparents. These are ancestral subconscious imprints that you're not even consciously aware of. Right. And But when you delete these malware, you could say like a virus in your software, right? Mm -hmm. They're not ha helping you in any way. They're, they're negative things. <laughs> um, then suddenly your hard drive runs smoother, right? If you ever, if you ever had a you know, virus on your computer, you know what I'm oh, talking yes. about, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so once you delete those viruses, the computer runs faster, meaning your hard drive is smoother 
smoother and quicker and you start thinking in positive ways about yourself and about your health and you know even about as we're talking about losing weight oh yeah and that's what i i started thinking about in in terms of my uh not gaining a lot of weight and having diabetes and all these things to happen and uh, storing in my computer, my brain, because I used to work with computers and we would say garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> right. And that's what happens with our mind. We store all this garbage up in our computer, our CPU, that central processing unit, as we used to call it, because mm -hmm. I worked with computers so many years back in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s until I retired from L.A. County. And uh, it's the food, what you eat, and having being healthy and dieting. I had a guest on the show um, last year, and we were talking about dieting. And they said, what we got to do is take that word die out of dieting and start adding. And I love that, healthy foods to what we're eating. We can leave the ting and have fun, but just delete the die. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's great. So with that, there are some he even healthy foods. We, we think sometimes people tell us, oh, you know, this is healthy for you. Eat plenty of bananas, eat plenty of apples and oranges and fruits. But sometimes the things that we think are healthy, they're not always healthy for us, I'm hearing. And uh, I know you can share with us some things that we think are healthy and they're not so healthy. What are those foods? Well, there's three in particular I'll talk about today. Three foods, healthy foods, quote unquote, mm -hmm. to avoid nowadays yeah. are wheat, yeah. corn, and soy. There you go. <laughs> and yes. wheat for the reasons yes. I mentioned before about the gluten and the hybridizing and all of the processing. Mm -hmm. And corn and soy because of the genetic modification. Mm -hmm. Yes. And at this point, pretty much all of the corn and soy is has been genetically modified. And genetic modification is basically, they call it gene splicing. Mm -hmm. And they That's take right. genes uh -oh. from right. other bacteria, viruses, other plants, animals, mm -hmm. and introduce it. Mm -hmm. So it's literally like yeah. a foreign gene. So right. taking a gene, let's say, from a fish, introducing it to a plant with the hopes that it'll be able to withstand cold weather and that's and where we are you putting that in our right. bodies yes. and and we used to be told that eat all this wheat and now that's not healthy huh well the wheat has been so manipulated uh, over the decades right. uh, uh, the corn like i mentioned earlier has been uh genetically manipulated as well uh soy uh, you can make pretty much make anything with soy that's why it's not made for human consumption because it's made for other purposes. So I, I tell people all the time to stay away from them like the plague. Yes. <laughs> what about soy milk, Dr. Shari? Uh, soy milk, is that something we shouldn't be drinking? Or how does that... Uh... Well, I recommend people avoid soy milk in general also just because of the hormonal effects it can also have. Mm -hmm. And just nowadays, and because there's so many other ways to get you know our needs, our nutritional needs met. Right. Mm -hmm. And because with corn also, corn is used as a staple. Not They're giving it to the animals as well, the That's GMO right. corn. The That's animals right. are getting ill. The people are getting ill when we eat the meat and the dairy. Um, and because also this corn is introducing pesticides into, it actually, our bodies? into our bodies. It's designed so that the corn itself will produce a pesticide for destroying the gastrointestinal tract, the, mm -hmm. the gut basically of bacteria. Mm -hmm. That's but right. when we're eating that, it's having releasing pesticides within our own digestive tract, right. leading right. to inflammation, leading to something that we call leaky gut. And mm -hmm. then again, the whole cascade mm -hmm. of food that's not completely digested gets back in the bloodstream. The immune system thinks it's the enemy, and then it's attaching to our different organs, causing a whole host of diseases. Yeah, yeah, it becomes a domino effect at a that point. Domino effect. And it's all based on man's tampering with nature i mean this is what it all comes down to oh, yeah, it does. It, it's it's, it, it's that's what it man comes down has to. man has uh literally take taken it upon ourselves as humans and has turned what we call now franken foods now yes. because frankenstein now, the monster food that's right <laughs> that's right the 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 you have and i can always tell um for example salmon you can always tell your wild-caught salmon from your farm-raised yes. salmon mm -hmm. automatically, automatically. And I, and you, you, this is what you have to start teaching people uh, the distinctions between uh, what is real or food that your body will recognize as an energy source versus uh, other 
food, I call them uh, man-made food products yes. because they're produced for a certain purpose. And that's to eventually make us sick. It's a chain reaction. We get sick, we go to the doctor, they prescribe this and that and the other. Versus teaching uh, what you're doing in your centers, teaching the subconscious way. And I want to talk about this right here, thought feel therapy, because I, I'm very familiar with that. We always hear about um, the uh, emotional freedom technique through, uh, um, but we never hear about where emotional freedom technique came from. It stems from this right here, the original, uh, 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 what is called thought feel therapy. Can you explain, because uh, uh, I think it's fascinating. Most people n will never know how our bodies work on an energetic level. We always want to know, know about the physical side of things. Right. So can either one of you explain how thought field therapy yes. operates? Yes, definitely. Actually, Deepak found out about thought field therapy back in 1996 mm. and when he was trying to find the most innovative technologies. And, doctor, and thought field therapy was devised by Dr. Roger Callahan, who yes. recently passed away. An absolute genius. <sighs> And yes, he's a psychologist yes, yes. from Palm Springs, Indian yes. Wells, California. Yes. And he was always searching for quicker, faster ways to treat anxiety, depression, yeah. panic attacks, emotional trauma, uh, without having to go through years of therapy. That's right. And so he studied acupuncture, kines applied kinesiology. Yeah. And what he found is that by tapping on certain acupressure points in a specific yes. sequence, mm -hmm. it can help clear blockages in the meridian system yeah. that are causing that anxiety, depression, whatever it may be. And that's another thing that we never hear in allopathic medicine. We never hear about the meridian system. We hear about the digestive system. We hear about the muscular and skeletal system. We never hear about the invisible system that pretty much supersedes all of them If when you really get down to it because everything is energy first. So the meridian system, the tapping yes. technique, uh, that uh, Roger and I have uh, a few of his lectures and one of his DVDs as well um, tapping on certain meridian points to literally send a shockwave if you will through uh, through certain channels and it blows out that negative energy that builds up based on what you described all of the challenges that you may have heard throughout your childhood uh, that get deeply rooted into not only your neurological system but energetically it builds and that also can get, p make people gain weight as well the emotional stress yes. that holds energy because negative energy has mass it holds weight yes part of those uh five uh six actually uh listings that you stated dr shari about um how food sensitivity, the de dehydration, the, about the digestive system, and stress does can bring on those things. Because, but if you have a doctor that believes in these things, then I love this thought field therapy because I had not heard of that, and nor had I heard of Dr. Roger uh, Callahan. So that's good to know. I'm going to have to do a, more research. But I happen to have a very good doctor when I got sick and was on those seven medications, and now I'm not on any medications because I had the acupuncture and you're so right about that because they get to the root of the problem and start solving it but there are so many doctors that won't uh, mention that or tell you about acupuncture because I didn't know about it and I had never experienced it before but going to the acupuncturist over the years it really helped me to get off the medications but doctors want you to be on medication some of them and I chose to do my own research and start learning about these things and some doctors look at that as feel-good medicine when you're getting chiropractic treatment or acupuncture uh, physical therapy and that type of thing what happens is in our medical training that's what we're told hmm. you know and that's and you know it definitely <laughs> has its place uh, no question but the more we can address nutrition, lifestyle, stress, toxins, all of these factors yes. put together, medication, if it's absolutely needed, you know, I'll give med people medication, but then wean them off of it as the other issues have been addressed, right. then that's very empowering because ultimately we want right. to empower. Yes. That's right. 
everyone right. yeah, to Some take charge of their do. health. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, and that's the whole point, to uh, to give people their power back. Yes. You know, I mean, that's what you're doing, and that's what we're doing by having you here. We're giving people their power back because most people don't know this information, unfortunately, uh, because of we, we see the commercials on TV every day saying, go see your doctor about this, that, and the other. They never say, look for the root cause of your whatever your health challenge is go see your doctor and have them prescribe whatever it is uh that you're uh you know that you may be experiencing and they will prescribe you something every single month for the rest of your life if you allow them to and and when people are obese and you go to the doctor sometimes well sometimes the doctor is more obese than the patient and <laughs> you're looking to that doctor to help you and you're saying well how is he going to, he or she going to help me and share with me how to lose weight? What are they doing about their own situation? Because all of these weight problems, you're saying the inflammation that comes into your body, that's helping you to not lose the weight because you, your body is inflamed. And how can your body heal if it's inflamed? And I know what the root cause of them not wanting you to heal. A lot of it is about greed, of course, because you look at the profitability of people being sick versus the profitability of people being healthy. Whereas I think it could be profit on, on both sides of the coin. But if you're not too greedy and think that's all you're supposed to do is sacrifice the lamb so that you can uh, have all the gold. And that's ridiculous because we're talking about human beings here. And that's what matters. Human beings, these are lives here. So it, it's interesting. <laughs> I, and I really, we really have to thank our mother, um, Mrs. Manichari, because she's our inspiration behind really looking into complementary and alternative medicine, wow. mind-body medicine. Because when we were growing up, she would always talk, teach us about natural healing and bring right. in really remarkable healers who talked about nutrients and detoxification and mind body medicine right and she was she is a visionary and so that really inspired when i went into medicine i knew that i would end up incorporating that into my practice in deepak when he went into engineering right. that was his int interest as well right and and it's interesting you said that because when you look at the black population hispanic population versus the asian population uh you don't have the weight problem. You see very few Asian people with the weight problem. Well, what we're seeing though now in here, but also in India, is that there's a rising incidence of heart disease, obesity, diabetes, as we're introducing the yeah, GMO. That's right. And all of these right. other countries. Yes, right. into the other and you're, yeah. so, yes. you're mm -hmm. right about that because we had uh, a heart specialist here, Dr. Caldwell B. Esseston, well-known retired heart uh, surgeon who has worked out of the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. And he's written a book also about uh, reversing heart disease. And he talked about that same thing. They had done studies back in the, you talked about the 50s. And me being born in the early 50s, we didn't have all this uh, genetic GMO food and the gluten food and all this stuff because we raised all of our food and Dr. Uh, Esselstyn talked about some of this stuff uh, as to why now we see all this increase in other countries now because they've done studies on it and all of these fast foods and things are being introduced in other countries too. Definitely because even with let's say even with the GMO corn, right. it's found in pretty much everything from cornstarch which is in sauces and gravies and cornmeal which is in tacos and chips and tortillas. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so we're and of course high fructose corn syrup which right. is in sodas. Yes. So so it's GMO yes. corn plus all the other additives that are found in all these foods and that's why when people are eating it they're having the effect of weight gain, m That's metabolism right. issues, diabetes, heart disease, inflammation. Yeah. Oh, wow, amazing. Now, what, um, we, because we're getting uh, close to uh, time, uh, the three w quick ways and easy ways to just wipe out without dieting. Okay. <laughs> Definitely one of them is to avoid these the wheat, the yeah. corn, and the soy, and the soy yeah. which means the processed foods as much as possible. Think of it not as a diet, but as a healthy lifestyle, a healthy food program. Right. So incorporating plenty of organic as much as humanly possible. Right. Vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. We shop at our farmer's markets. 
right. every Saturday. Our right. mother's been doing that, trained us on that since Great. we were in Toledo. Right. So every weekend, I encourage everyone to go to the local farmer's market and get all of their produce, most of the produce from there. Right. And even then, the humanely grown organic me- meats where they're giving the animals, you know, they're grass-fed. They're allowed right. to have a quality, high quality of life. That's right. That's and right. That goes for the eggs as well. And the eggs, yes. yes. Mm. Absolutely. And then the emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, essentially, take a look at your limiting beliefs. It's something most people don't do. But if you actually ask yourself, like, you know, why don't I want to lose weight? If you take a look back you'll, and look at your childhood and look, you know, you'll, you'll begin to see patterns. Mm-hmm. Most people don't mm-hmm. do this. And that's, that's the, true. That's what I specialize in doing with people. And then when you see these limiting beliefs, these are, how, you know, wrong beliefs of how you see the world. Right. Um, you can kind of take a look at it and question them. Like, is, does that make sense that, you know, grandma said I should, you know, not eat this or mm-hmm. eat this? Did mm-hmm. that make sense? Or or I should only eat this kind of food or, you know, or I don't deserve to eat this kind of food or I, that I don't look that I don't look good, that I'm right. not pretty or, or handsome mm-hmm. or, you know, is that really true? Question mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. And, and, you know, see if it has any weight behind it. And oftentimes you'll see there is no, there's no substance to those. Right. And if that's the case, those are limiting beliefs and you can delete them from your hard drive. Mm-hmm. I, I can help people assist them in that whole process, but it, this will help people get started. Good. Um, on the last few minutes that we have, you had a question uh, to Dr. Chari about the uh, health forum about uh, yes, cervical cancer. Yes, I, sh- I sure did, cancer. and I want to ask you that. Yeah, I went to this cervical cancer um, forum. But like I said, I wanted to go to another one, but they had them all at the same time, so I w- chose to go to the cervical one. And I was asking several questions, and one of the questions was about um, eating healthy to prevent uh, many cancers, including cervical cancer, because uh, I know from my research, statistically speaking, cancer is on the rise. I mean, we've seen an increase, but there's a war on everything, including cancer, diabetes, and everything, but it's still increasing. And now you've given the rundown as to why they're increasing. It has to do with nutrition and lifestyle and emotions, as, as Deepak, uh, Deepak has, has to- to- spoken about. And uh, I asked a question of, will healthy eating and nutrition have anything uh, any bearing on cancer of the cervix and can- cervical cancer and the doctor said no it doesn't matter what you eat and I was really amazed at that because in my research and having uh, Dr. Esselstyn here and talking to other people that are health conscious and health experts they have a different view of that yes there's no doubt that healthy nutrition is the foundation for health mm-hmm. it's the absolute foundation And when we focus our energy on that, in addition to emotions, we'll see a lot of the health issues that we're seeing start to decrease. Right. So it's critical. And and that's what I thought, too. And I was I'd never heard that before. And I was really amazed. And the other thing the doctor said was that of all the cancers, because I brought out the point, statistically speaking, we're they're rising. They're just going up, up, up. And she said, not cervical cancer. It has decreased. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, because I haven't done any research, but I know uh, on statistically speaking, all the other cancers are increasing. We have such an increase in everything: cancers, uh, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, and it's more. And if the other interesting thing about at this um, women's health uh, forum was that everything that had increased was more related to black people and Hispanic people. And I said, that has to be because we're not being educated on how to better take care of ourselves. And I know nutrition plays a major role. I know that from my own research. So I was really surprised hearing that at a a women's health forum coming from a doctor. Yes, no, that's a foundation (laughs) because the quality of our health depends on the quality of health of our cells. What nutrients are we given it? Mm -hmm. And then how is the cell able to generate energy and then get rid of toxins? That entire process. That's right. Absolutely. It is a process. And actually it's the process that that they never seem to talk about the, not only the physical side, but the energetic side of things, which actually for me is first, then the nutrition. Because if you don't have your thoughts uh, about what you eat uh, or thoughts about what you feel about yourself, then everything else will crumble from there. So you have to get your thoughts correct first and foremost. That will lead you to that better, healthy lifestyle of eating better food. And I like the fact you said healthy 
eating, uh, however you phrase it, as opposed to dieting. Right. I like that. Right. That's that's really what we need to educate people on. And I like the fact we're going to have to have you all back because, <laughs> I mean, we, we are out of time and we want to get some final thoughts and tell people how to contact you as well. And then we're going to uh, We're going to wrap, wrap it up. up. <laughs> sure. Well, they can um, – our website is, you know, www.charicenter.com. It's C-H-A-R-I-C-E-N-T-E-R.com. Our phone number is 805-963-1111. Um, so if you know people want to get more information about us, they can check that out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And your center is located in? We're in downtown Santa Barbara. Uh, we're at 1215 De La Vina Street. We're in Suite J. We have our own parking lot. Um, so, yeah, that's we're in the da- heart of downtown Santa Barbara. Wow. Absolutely. And I would advise anyone, if you're interested in uh, having a well-rounded solution to any of your Uh, eating habits and so forth get in touch with them because they are located here locally we're in Hollywood Los Angeles area but Santa Barbara is not that far away that's (laughs) right and and the great thing is we also do Skype so because anywhere in California you know you don't have to physically come into our office we can do the console by Skype as well you You hear that and if they do Skype you we are we are broadcasting worldwide so you can also Skype in worldwide and get your health need health needs met no matter where you live globally and that's the great part about it that's right that's right so with that being said we want to thank you dr rupa chari and dr deepak chari for being our guests very informative love the passion and love the knowledge uh because you're you're, for me you're preaching the choir i love it (laughs) i love it so thank you both for being here thank you thank you for inviting us and thank you again and with that being said we will see you next week And as I always say before we leave, your power lies within you. So let it loose. Until Until next next week. week.